Hey Lex, back here painting Frida Kahlo. This is an oil painting on masonite, which is a, like a pressed pulpy wood that they press to make a wood out of. It's usually like a brown board uh, and then, you know, you paint on it. And she did it in oils. Mine's acrylic and it's on a tray, a wood tray that I got at a auction. And I painted the sides, which I thought was really pretty cool. And now it's more of a three-dimensional look to it. So it's going to be my showing you how I accomplished the painting, which includes her monkey and a uh, shell necklace, the leaves, the patterns that she has, the colors. I had to adjust a few things. You'll see where I adjust the nose, the um, lips, and the forehead. Um, and I went off of this painting. It's at the Albright Knox Art Gallery in Buffalo, New York, and it's from 1938. So let's get going and I'll show you how I painted it. Hey friends, before I get started, I'd like to know if you could subscribe, hit the bell, and every time I share a, a video, you'll get the notification. I really appreciate you subscribing. Thanks. I think I'm going to keep this down here until we paint the sides because it doesn't really need to be up when we're painting now. So um, as I mentioned, I'm going to just um, lightly um, draw everything out. I'll do it like in this orangey red. I'll make a color right here. And then just draw the the what we're going to do here out. So I'm just putting in her hair lightly where it works out. So I'm putting in her eyes right now. When I want to put a nose in, I'll um, put a little bit of a a V here to make the bridge and then um, the nose will come like this. I'm just going to draw that line there and this way I can get... I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring but he's snoring. So I'm just formulating her eyes. The I'll open them or shut them a little bit, raise the eyebrows a little bit later. Um, maybe drop this in. So as you can see, I'm just sketching in. When you sketch in, you're just trying to find places to put everything. Her cheekbone, oops, a little bit higher there. Okay, so I'm gonna change that a little bit. Okay, so here, I'm gonna put in her lips. Again, all the, the red, you won't see it because I'll paint right over it, but as you can see, um, it's different than just sketching it with a pencil. You'll prefer it once you do that, that you don't put the pencil on either the graph uh, on the wood or the masonite or the canvas you really don't want to mess that up okay so I'm going to take that in a little bit okay I'm going to shorten this she um, had a unibrow which is this right in here connected and a mustache, and her husband actually, her husband Diego Rivera, actually liked that. So that was her thing. Okay, so I'm going to bring in the cheeks right here. And the jawline. line here. Okay, this is going to come all the way into back here. As I said, we may not be able to fit everything in this composition, but we'll get as much as we can. We'll go on the sides. Um, her neck is really long in this painting, so I 
probably won't get it all. So I'm just making do with what I have in space wise. I guess I could have made the head a little smaller to incorporate the neck, but this is right now how I'm working. Right, so shorten that because I really want the neck to be a little longer. So I'm going to shorten this top part here and that can come over here and then that can come over this way onto the tray as well. Okay, here's the little monkey. I'm gonna need this to come out this way so I can get his little paw in there or something. Yeah. You know. Close this uh, head in a little bit. I have it too high on the hairline. I'm gonna close it in a little bit. So you're looking for shapes when you paint. So this is a shape right here, the hairline, and then it goes up a bit and then comes here. So I'm looking at the final shape. Um, <clears throat> I need to make the eyebrow a little bit different here. And it comes off a little bit on the, she has it out more, whether, okay, yeah. So here's my shape on the top. I have this shape right here. And the brows, I have to straighten the brows out a little bit. They're not as far, far down. I'm just gonna grab a darker color, grab this blue. Okay, so we wanna end that right there. And they're kind of an arc. So those are a shape as well. So we're just looking for shapes. That's how I also teach drawing, I teach drawing same way, you're just looking for shapes. Okay, we got that. Okay, so the forehead, she has like more of an angle on it. Like this, and I'm gonna bring that eyebrow there up. Here's the little monkey. So the monkey is under her lips. So just put his little fuzzy head right here. And he's sort of tucked behind her. It does come out over here. So I'll have that basic piece there. And then the leaves. So I'm blocking in, let's see, it comes in like this. Okay, like that. And then the bigger leaf right here. here like that and we're just gonna bring this one up here because we're gonna treat this differently than her painting the, the pieces will come over and and come over on this side as well so I'll just exaggerate the composition to fit the tray so she's got some coming this way and then there's a group coming upwards too And then, right. Okay, 
So we have the composition basically in. And some of the leaves are more like, um, more sturdy looking like the ones over here. And some of them have like a fuzzier appearance to how she painted it. And then behind here is, oh, I should put behind there. All right, let me see if I can change that a little bit. Put that leaf in there. There's like a, something behind it, like a shape. Let me put that back there. So we're basically ready to, let me just check her. Because sometimes your perspective is lost when it's flat like this and you're painting flat. So I'm just gonna just adjust a couple things here. Okay. All right, so her skin has got a really yellowy tone to it. Um, let's see if I can show you. I'll move my palette over more. I'll move this over more and I'll move the painting that I'm looking at over. So you can see it more if you can see parts of it. can see what I'm looking at. Okay. I got a paintbrush I was looking for. So I'm going to take this white and drag it like kind of over here, but, and then some of that yellow, it's going to get very yellowy-ish. But since the skin is a bigger portion of the, okay, so I'm going to grab some of this red too. I don't want to give too much red is really the red and the yellow and the blue are the primary colors and they're really intense so you can see if you add too much yellow it's very yellow if you add too much red it gets too red now my skin tone is almost too fleshy but eh, it's not bad um so i'm gonna block in the skin right now and then i'll go in, on top of it and add more of what she was a approaching in her her painting I might have to like put a couple coats on this, but I would anyhow because I'm going to layer the colors. So you want to work over around the whole entire painting when we're going to put the skin tone in now, but we would also block in everything at the same level. You don't want to just like finish like this, just this cheek or something and you, you kind of want to work on the entire composition. Now, I'm not saying I would work on the edges right now, but um, you, you don't want to just finish one corner. You want to finish it somewhat. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll lift it up and paint inside here. This makes um, this piece a decorative piece because it's going to be multi-use. I'll put polyurethane on it and actually use the tray. So that makes it more decorative than a painting. I guess I could use it on, on the wall. You could put a hook in the back and use it on the wall as well. I kind of like things like that where you use something that's was supposed to be intended for a different use and use it as art. So I'm going to uh, block in the leaves. I'll use that same brush. So here's the hooker's green. It's that darker green. I'm going to drag that off to the corner here and get a lot of this. put this there without contaminating the yellow too much. Oops. Okay, so I'll kind of introduce a little bit of yellow and white to it and just lightly block in her, her leaves here. So I'm gonna go right up to her face.
with wood it's a little drier feeling um, but I like it because it doesn't kick back that's why I like work, working on wood and you can poly I poly my canvases too but when you poly wood it looks different I, I really have a lot quite a few paintings that I've done on wood um, right so here there's her hair her hair, hair actually goes back more than what I have it so I'm gonna block that in with the leaves She's painted green in her hair over like a, I think she's used like a pure black on her hair. But that's when I'll take artistic license and use the Payne's Gray with blue in it. Okay, so I got that bigger leaf and, and I'm gonna come over here and do this one and go in that direction. I'm gonna add that little bit of white that I put over here in it, the color, just to differentiate it from the darker color back there, so. I'll just leave that like that. With, when you're blocking in colors, it, it's, it's, it takes time and it's part of the process. And I find it just as interesting as the paint, you know, the final painting process because um, you're making decisions, even though they take longer to achieve it. You're making decisions on uh, light and darks and textures and shapes and so forth. So, um, and um, at that point, you could actually change things too in this process. So, I mean, that's why I'm showing that you, I'm painting the entire uh, composition. So, uh, if I want it to move something or change a color, I could. Right, so, we have that. And put the sky in a little bit. I wouldn't put the sky in right now. I'd let this dry and then put the sky in so it doesn't like drag into each other and then become messy. I mean, I could keep it neat, but it just is easier to do that and let that dry a little bit. And then you paint underneath like these little spots. Sometimes I'll paint the blue first and then paint on top of it. Um, it doesn't matter at this point. So it, this is a positive negative, um, the positive being the leaves right now and the white being the negative, which will become the sky. And back here, I'm going to just make it a little darker. And it starts to define her face. So you're having the actual background push against her face and give her that definitive look. Now on the monkey, I'm just going to leave him like Again, not paint him at the same time. I'll paint him when this dries. Right, her necklace comes in here. So I'm gonna put the shape of her necklace, that shell necklace. It comes like that, so we'll leave that. Okay, and these leaves, I'll just put them in as well and bring them up on the wall. Now, um, the painting doesn't have leaves on this side, but I'm gonna add them because, you know, it's a tray and it, it would need something, so. And then I'll add the sky wherever I don't put the leaves. Well, I'm gonna put the little arm, the little paw in of his by leaving that shape in there and paint this leaf coming up to her neck. As you can see, we're going quickly enough to get the composition um, painted in nicely. The fun part is the detail work, I know. That's the part, it's like eating your dessert, but you have to do all this time consuming part too. Can see it 
it's all on the sides and everything. I'm going to start working on her face more. Let the background. Oh, and I got to put her hair in still. So I wiped the. I went and got water to sort of rinse out. I have two cups of water. Okay, so I'm going to go into the Payne's Gray to block in her hair. And um, you can see it almost looks black, but it's not black. It's got blue, a lot of blue in it. And I like it because it's got more of um, a more richness to it, I believe. That's why I like using it. My uncle Bill, who was a watercolor painter, he introduced me to Payne's Gray. So I have her hairline here. I just have to be careful how she has it. I'm trying to stay as close to the painting on her face as possible. Her hair, she has like really pulled back, like really pulled back, like at an angle. So it, it feels like she stretched that hair out and it's tight. It's like a bun here, back here, but a braid as well. The Payne's Gray um, is going to need a little couple coats, so I'm going to grab a little of that purple I told you about, the accent purple, and it's starting to dry out. Go in there, give it some color. So I'm going to grab the Payne's Gray again and put in her eyebrows a little bit here. It's a little bit watery. I won't go too much because I still have to put a lot more of her skin in again, but I just will block them in. That way if I need to um, add on to them again, I can. So this is sort of up more and then they go up more and then they kind of just taper off like that. So I have them down too low here and I'll paint right over that, so that's a good idea that I'm kind of like figuring that out now that I can change things. Oh, um, because I'm just blocking it in uh, for shape. And then when it's time, I'll go and put the little, little detail things. Because this is still um, the blocking in stage. Okay. Adding more color onto her face. Now that we have that there, um, I got the white. I'm gonna grab the yellow. Maybe grab a little orange. She has a lot of orange in her skin that she's painted. You know, this is not a realistic painting. It's a stylized painting that she's done. Okay, so. Now you can see, I'm gonna take away some of this Actually, I'm going to bring that. She's got a higher cheekbone. I'm going to take some of that out. And then the green will come and go back and we'll redo that. And then you can see that, see how um, there was like a wash on there. That the second coat coming in a different direction because I had that going that way. I'm coming down this way now. Could even go that other way. It starts to add uh, more depth to the painting and not as washy looking. I'm not going to get too too detail-y with this because, as I said, I have to work on the entire painting. So I'm going to continue to put the rest of the rinse, the colors in. And then I'll put in like uh, the other ones that are missing. And then we'll continue working the entire painting. Like I'll do the hair over, do more skin, the greens. Sometimes I'll jump from the skin to the greens. That way it gives you time to see if you like the direction that you're painting in terms of uh, finish quality. I'm mixing on the, the colors. Okay, so I gotta kind of look at both. All right, so I'm gonna come. She's got a really dark um, neckline. 
And as I said, it's really long. It's much longer than a person would have for a neckline. So I'm gonna try to take it as far as I can, the length of it as far as I can on the tray. Go off a little bit here on her mouth and just sort of formulate her chin. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of, she's, it sort of comes in and goes out. So I'm gonna leave that like that for now. So like at an angle on her, on her chin, I gotta get that right angle, the angle right, not right angle, right, the angle right so that it doesn't change the look of the painting because that would drastically change it if I don't get that right on the angle. Just lightly put in her eyelid. The eyelid's at an angle as well. Um, so she has like a line, like a little line coming from here straight up like this like almost straight across the eye to define her eye, like straight like this. And I, I have to make sure I do that too. And then this part comes like down and up. Next, I'm going to go back and start putting more into her face, but part of me wants to go straight to the hair because I think that would be easier to fill in quicker. And then, because it's really patchy, so, okay, so I'm, I've got a little green on my brush. I need to put a tone down first because you can see the streakiness before I get carried away with any more of the details. Okay, so I'm gonna put in the cheek color right now. A little piece of dusk or something got in there. Okay, I just added red into the color. She has quite a bit of red on her face here. It's starting to pull together so it's not so streaky. You can see some of the wood uh, grain in the painting. I just grabbed a little bit of the white because I'm going to work on the inside of the ear right here. She has a little bit more yellow. I will come back and add a little bit more yellow in a minute. I just wanted to add that. It, at this point, we're st still layering the paint. It's uh, still, you know, at various levels of not being finished. Put this chin, the chin. She has like a little cleft in her chin. Or that little, I don't know, shape. You can do that right. I got a little red in there, but that's what she has in the painting, so we're good. This shape coming here, shape of the mouth. So she's painted like uh, shapes 
of color, I mean, you know, patches of color to define areas of the painting on her face. I have a lot of paint on there, so I'm going to move that color over there. So now I'm just going to take the lips and do this, this bottom part and keep them still not quite finished. And then I will use some of that red near her eye that's on the brush and a little bit on her cheek. It just takes a long time to complete something like this. You know, you couldn't, I'll probably come back to it. I won't do it in one sitting. I can do it in one sitting, but it's better to come back. That way you're seeing something that you didn't see before. If you sit and do something in one sitting, you more than likely have to go and re repair things and do things that you didn't see. I mean, you always have to do that anyhow, but This is still like, you know, it going to take like another layer or two before up to the point where we're adding detail because this is really not in the detail phase yet. So on this guy, I'm going to just go really dark in there. I'm going to grab this blue and add it off to the side and make that like a bluey color back there. And that will push that orange back too. I'm gonna bring it some into her, her braid. I think I'll grab a little bit more of the hooker's green to the side and I kind of wanna, and then I have this yellow here that's just kicking around. I'll just do that. And then this, actually it's a little bit more green. She's sort of just made that, I'm making it more of a, I'll have to go back over and do it more of a straight up, more greeny color, but it doesn't look bad doing the yellowy green here as well. And then I'm coming with what's on the brush. Oh, I'm gonna sort of round it off to grab the detail on that. And she's got it coming like this, so. I need to bring that braid behind her ear like this. And she, she has them in layers, so some of them are going one direction and the others are going in the other direction to achieve the braid. You really know that her hair is braided by this. She, and I've got to really go back in and work on, let's do that right now. She has this coming out like this, so you know that feeling and that rounded feeling. See the braid, that shape, so that I have that in and out so you really could feel that that's a braid. This way, I'm also painting in this direction so that you feel like the hair is, is going in that direction. Hers is more solid. I'll go back and I'll put more of, her, of the Payne's Gray after I lay in these colors of um, the greenish color towards her hairline. So all I'm doing is I'm taking that color, going right into the forehead and pulling it this way in small little strokes. I'm just going to go over again another layer, um, again working in the entire painting. I, I'm moving around, uh, that's normal um, to, to do that. Um, see how the, now that color is going to set on top of the colors that we put below it. So I'm putting a little bit of white on there. I'm going to bring in this color towards her hairline. So the, I'm going to work around towards the mouth in layers because it's it's uh, very busy with colors and you don't want to get it so it's messy. Um, so just going like a uh, little layering process is, is very helpful. 
Plus that's the fun part of painting when you can do these little tiny color blocks or color overlays. I think that's my favorite part of painting. I want to put more yellow into it, but I'm just like really going slowly to do it, even though there was a lot of yellow in the painting, because the cadmium yellow is a really intense color. It's pure pigment, and it will definitely be too much if I don't do it like in slow bits. Take that little shape of color and come in and define the shape of her eye up here. So you're kind of just, like I mentioned before, you're working all over, you see um, those colors. Okay, so I'm gonna define them. Her paint light is setting on top of a couple layers. If you look underneath there, there's layers of paint. So I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna just put this in and then pull it out a little bit because I wanna layer up do it in layers of um, of the darkness, but in different depths of layering, and even dry brushing. You can hear there's no paint again in the brush. That that's what give you the dry brush. I could actually pull what I just did off a little bit, and then move that paint to other parts of the neck by like using this and moving it. As I mentioned, I don't use really expensive brushes uh, on the most part. I have them, and I really don't use them. I, I mean, I spent years for finishing a muraling where brushes, you know, would get destroyed because you're, you're moving a lot. And um, somebody might talk to you about something, a client or one of the people I work with on the project, and if you didn't, if you turned long enough, you could leave the brush too long, and then it would get dried up and they have things you can wash your brushes out and get old paint out of them. I use those on... Let me show you. See, it's starting to build up in here. Because you want that to look as nice. So I'm going to take that burnt umber. Put it right in that crease, it'll look super. And then bring it to the edge and pull it in. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna go back and do a little bit of this highlight on here. So it's like a shade, like a couple shades low, lighter than that color I have on there now. And just let it set on top of there. She's got it right in here. You start seeing lots of little things, even, I mean, I notice those things, but there's so much to do that I have to remember to go back and really just start to pull apart details and and really add what makes it like um, the painting is so detailed. Um, you know, like little, little tiny nuances, intents. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a wash right here, bottom of her nose. It's kind of like up here like that. I'm gonna wash it off. I'm not leaving it that intense. I'm just putting it in right now. Now I have a little bit of paint on my brush. I'm going to put those little hairs back in, but they're going to lay lightly. I need to get rid of this piece. It's a little too dark. So I'm going to lightly put back in. Just let that sit right on top of there. And they'll kind of like go away a little bit like that and then I kind of get what I'm looking for so it's starting to really come around I have to do her necklace finish up more of the face pull this hair more in you know do the neck I'll have to put a, a more of a ruler coming in here and so I'm just doing the same thing I'm doing just the line work just sort of following the direction of the, the leaves. I'm gonna come right up to her face. 
So I'm just gonna go in that direction to get rid of that. I'll make it look good later. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna just put some of these little highlights coming on this one, coming this way. That's that one. It's got a lot of detail going that way. So I'm back to trying out these brushes I just got. I'm going to be working on this leaf right here and it's just a bunch of little tiny circles in various colors. So I'm going to put that one in and then the base coat of this leaf and then the other ones, they kind of are off the painting so, so I made up the other ones and I'll just do a pattern on those. So I'm going to pull out this number five, four and I think the two and maybe this one today. That's that set I got from Amazon, Oku, I think is how you're saying it, Oku. Pretty good. So far so good. So they come with little plastic sleeves on them, I'm just taking those off for now. I have, you can see my personal brushes are really destroyed from leaving them water too long. I, I mean, I pull them out every time I'm finished painting, but I put them in there. I won't do that to these right now and see what happens. So last time I fixed stuff on her face, I added that piece of paint, which I needed to add a little bit more. Um, I did this leaf in the monkey and started the necklace. Uh, worked on the eyebrows, worked around the eyes, I uh, did a little work on the mustache and I left the lips alone. So going after this one, I put in new yellow, white, and some hookers green. Um, the rest of the colors sort of held up. I put new white in. So I'm going to try the one and see what happens. Grabbing some little, a little bit of yellow. It has a little bit of green in it, so I'm going to grab a little bit of the green, not much, and a little bit of this white. Make enough of the color. This white is going to be dedicated to that. I put a new white over there for whatever else I need it for. But this white is dedicated for just this leaf, so if I get a little bit of other color in it, the yellow or the green is fine because it's for this only. I'm not going to contaminate it. It's pretty creamy. So I take the brush and I'm rounding it to get some of that paint off. And then I'm going to make these little kind of circles. She's got like a, they're not exactly planned out looking. They look, I don't know how she did it, but they look like they're circular, so, but they're kind of like, it looks like she just moved the, the brush around. I fade them out by just not putting as much paint, which makes it more interesting. You can build up after it dries with other colors and or more intensity like of the of the actual color itself. But all this adds a lot of spark to the painting when you have like this many varieties of this bright color with the dark colors around it, you can start to see it starts to really pop. So you don't want to have something that's completely, when you're doing your own painting, all one tone or one value, um, or else it becomes really not as interesting of a composition. Just adding some of this white and the orange. So I'm just gonna do this shape back here she has. And then she has it like a green inside of it and the white little fuzzies. So I don't wanna ignore that. Kind of comes like a some sort of a pod or something. I don't know what it is. I'll I'll investigate. See if I can find out. Actually, I could take Hooker's green to make it more interesting. Put that over here and see. Grab this red. Put it there. And Hooker's green and red make a really great dark color. So I'm mixing them, you can see the red going right into the hooker's green and it makes it almost like a brownie green, but it gives it a depth. 
and then I'll go right in here with it. I think this is too thick of a brush. I think I want it. I'm gonna go put that there and come in for the number four and grab that up and then have more control of this spot. And I'm gonna put that in there. Look at that's you can tell it, it's much darker than the green. Look at you can see the hooker's green next to it, and this is much darker. And that's what I want it. So I need this to shape up over here like that. And over here, I'm gonna bring that color right back here. I'll just just bring a little of the color around, but that'll stay like that. I'm gonna load the brush up and go behind that pod or whatever it is. So I'm gonna let it happen. Just following the edge of this leaf with the white or what's on my brush, I should say. I'm gonna outline this. Sort of skipping it a little bit, like where I paint the line, but it's not like really rigid. It's just what's on the brush and you sort of let it move it, but it's, you know, the line is not as strong as other lines and it's good too to break up your line. There you go. All right, I'm just gonna finish on the edge of there. Okay, so I probably, well, I'm gonna go right now and add some more because it's really a, quite a few layers of it. So I'm just gonna go right on top of it and do some swirls with as much paint as I can get in there without too much water and just sort of swirl on top of it. So I get those top layers too. Okay, so I'm done for now. Um, I'm gonna rinse the brush. clean them in a minute because this has got a lot of paint in it. it really needs to be washed out. So what we did today, put those little pods in what there and there. And then after that, uh, added color all around. Um, then after that, put the little swirly things here put the veins in there, put the yellow coloring in there, put a little bit more highlights in that piece. Um, darkened this leaf here with a, a hooker screen with the cadmium red mixture, put that on there. Um, what we'll do tomorrow, what I'll do tomorrow is tighten up any of these leaves that I don't may not think look as finished, like maybe make some like really nice tidy pieces there. I will put more veins on here, maybe put a little more squirrely things in there, finish her necklace, finish the monkey, and that's pretty much done. And then off camera, I will do the edges. I'll show you some of that. And that's pretty exciting. Oops. I'm excited. So I'm showing you the details of this tray now that I'm done. I did show you in the beginning, but now I really just want to show you all the little color changes and line work that is done when um, when it's all finished. Now let me go and show you, look at all the colors in here. You can see um, the changes with the yellow and the light blues to build his face up on uh, whites and all little washes. Look at the, the bone necklace on her neck. Um, same thing with her, the tone where I wash all the skin tones in. You can see all that. Let me see if I can get closer for you. Yeah, and you can see how it changes. Even the neck, how I kept washing those colors and left some washes. I went back over and changed a few things after I finished the painting. And you can see all the textures in here. This is what makes painting fun is all the extra little things you do. But you can see how much work it goes into changing every, you know, all these colors. And look at this too. See the orange tones? and the light yellow and all that mixed together makes it look really interesting. And see how her hair is pulled back. You can really see how she pulled it back and made it look um, really cool. And then the, the pod with all the little f um, fuzzy things. So yeah, I think it was a very successful try at this painting and I'm glad you stayed with me. I can't do these 
much um, shorter than the 46 minutes that this turned out to be, or 47 minutes. I These are way longer than 47 minutes of pain. I have to edit these down from like anywhere from six or eight hours, sometimes longer, um, to, to such a short period. So it's that um, trying to capture what I did and then sharing that with you so you can see the process. So, and here's our, our book and like, subscribe and share. Thanks. See you next, uh, this Thursday at my cl drawing class. Bye.